Hi, I'm Melina here. Uh, this is my second attempt to film this because sizing issues on my phone, but whatever. We're trying again. Um, I, this is my May comic haul. I did a comic haul last year, last year, last month, uh, well, the month before for April, and I didn't think that I was going to have enough comics to film a May one, but then I realized that May is the month that has free comic book day in it, and I ended up getting a shit ton of comics that day. So, let's go. Um, the first one I have here is from Boom Studios, and it's the 2017 Summer Blast. They did one of these last year for Free Comic Book Day, and I got that one as well, because I love all things um, Boom, and, like, I like Boombox, especially, like, the publishing company within this, but um, it has, like, a bunch of different stories from different uh, titles that they have in that company, and yes, that looks fun, and most of these I haven't read because... I'm lame and I need to get around to reading more. I just read a Deadpool trade earlier today, so I think I'm more in a comic grind, and then I remembered I needed to film this. Uh, every year, I get the bongo ones that they have, so this is the one for this year. I almost didn't get this one, and then we ended up going to a second comic location to look for comics, and I ended up um, picking this one up, so I'm really glad, and yes, now I have it. Um... Then I have I Hate Image, um, which is basically, it, it's in the world of the I Hate Fairyland comic, but it has different, like, image characters. Like, at one point there's, like, a uh, Rick from The Walking Dead in there. Yeah, see, look. He's right there. You see? And, yeah, it's adorable. And I, I've only read, like, a random issue of I Hate Fairyland, but I really enjoyed it. I like the main protagonist, because she hates everything. <laughs> um, but yes, I like that, and I love the art style and that. And then here I have a Rick and Morty comic. Um, I have one other Rick and Morty comic that I've, I've read and I've loved, and so they had this one for Free Comic Book Day, and my obsession with this show begins to grow. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have that one. Um, haven't read any of those yet, but that's what I'm saying. I need to get around to shit. Then I have, um, the rest of these, um, that I have here from the free ones have sleeves because they're more important to me. <laughs> um, and this is the Attack on Titan one that they released for this year. I got one last year as well that was more of a short story anthology preview for something that they were going to release, um, later in the year. Um, but this, I believe, is more just one complete story in the comic, and I don't know if they're going to start a series or something, but, um... I'm excited for it. It has the armored titan looking all cool on the cover. And yeah, I skimmed through it and the art and the style looks legit. It's just I haven't read it yet. <laughs> um then here I have when we went to the second location, I was looking for this, um, which is Wonder Woman Rebirth issue one. And I was also looking for the Miraculous Ladybug comic that they were going to release because I got the one from last year and they were coming out with one for this year, but I didn't find it. So I was really salty about that, because that was the only thing that I really wanted that I didn't get. Um, but yes, I got this. Still need to read it. <laughs> um, and uh, the other day I recently got some, like a couple Wonder Woman comics that they uh, released for free, because uh, the hype is real for her movie. <laughs> um, then I have The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. I also received, but I don't know if it was in last month's or if I received it this month, um, the Ocarina of Time Volume 1 manga of it. My sister got that for me as a gift, and I had already read it because I read both of her volumes before, but I was really glad to add it to my collection. Um, but yes, I have this, and I just got a text message. <laughs> and, um... This is gorgeous, and it's it focuses on the Twilight Princess game, so I still need to read this, but it's basically it in manga style, because when it gets released, it's actually in a manga instead of a comic. Okay, and now I have my favorite free comic, and probably my favorite comic that I got that entire day, which, don't judge me, but it's the Descendants comic that they released. I have a deep unhealthy obsession with all things Descendants. If you watch my book videos, you'll see that I, I read all of the books and I'm trying to obtain all of the books that they release, like even the side ones. And 
I, I've watched the movie, and I'm going to watch the second one that comes out um, at the end of July, and this is gorgeous. It is, like, basically um, the first movie, um, like, the exact story of the first movie, but, like, drawn in manga form, and it's so gorgeous. Look at that. It's so beautiful. I can't stand it. Um, Tokyo Pop is going to be releasing, like, more of a full volume of it, and... Yeah, I'm excited for that. When that comes out, I'm going to buy it, and it's just, it's gorgeous. Then here, speaking of the Ocarina of Time manga, I forgot that I also got this. It's it's a manga, obviously. It's the Death Note Black Edition Volume 1, which has the first two volumes in it. I already read the volumes from the library, but I needed to own this and have it in my collection. And then at Second and Charles, they had it for $6, so I needed to pick it up. Um, yeah, if... If you don't know what this is, first of all, why? <laughs> um, but it's basically about a guy in high school named Light who finds a um, journal that belongs to a death god that if you write somebody's name in it, they will die. And this is the greatest um, manga I've ever read, so I'm so glad to actually finally own it. Um, Yes, and then here I have ones that at Second and Charles they had a little like stand up front that was just comics that they had in overstock. So um, they were just kind of trying to get rid of all of them, so they were giving them out for free, like a limit of 10 per person. I got quite a few here because my mom picked up some for me as well because she didn't want too many. She like picked up one or two for herself, and then the rest I was like, ooh. Um, but yeah, I have these organized by publisher. They're very like random issues, like issue one, issue seven, and all that stuff. Like, well, one isn't random, but like, even if I don't have the earlier ones of it, I still pick them up because if I've been wanting to get into it, then at least now I have it. Um, I'm going to go first with the publishers that I don't, there's like only one or I've never really heard of, and they're kind of random. This is, I think, Icon, and this is Kick Ass 2, issue seven. I haven't seen nor read anything kick-ass related, but I really want to, and I was like, at least I'll have this for future reference, like, if I buy the first trade and read it, and then eventually can get around to this, and I can, like, skim it and see if even the characters are for me and that kind of stuff. Um, then here for Topps Comics, very random, issue five of, um, The X-Files. I just wanted it because I collect everything that I can find or obtain of X-Files, like books. Um, I have different comics. Um, I really want the Pop Vinyl comic that they just released of the X-Files, because that's freaking adorable, but, um, I have this, um, and, okay, so I have a couple of just one, but I have from Vertigo, this one killed me when I seen it, I got so excited, um, this is New Romancer, I've been wanting to get into this, this is about a guy from, like, Renaissance times who somehow ends up in our time period, and kind of has to learn about romance and stuff from a modern day girl, and uh, it's illustrated by Brett Parsons, who did um, the 21st Century Tank Girl, and I just am in love with his art, it's adorable, um, and it's issue two, which obviously isn't issue one, but it's, it's not that bad, it's not like issue 17 or something, so pretty good. I might try to read the first one online and read this one, and then at least I own it, and yeah. Then this one is from Dark Horse Comics. I technically own it already, but with a different cover. That um, Actually, for Fight Club 2, um, the story that takes place after the first movie slash book, um, they released the comics for it that are also by Chuck Palahniuk. Um, but I got one for Free Comic Book Day, I believe, like two years ago. And I also have like a random finalized cover and stuff, and I have quite a few of these, but... I loved this cover, I didn't own this cover, and it was free, so I was like, okay. And it's, it's never good to put free stuff in front of me. Um, then I have a couple Valiant comics here. I have Harbringer issue 1. Um, I believe I have issue 1 of Harbringer already in a different cover, but I don't know if it's the same issue 1, because this one has Faith and her boyfriend. Um, and I wanted to get some stuff that actually had her from that series, because I've only actually read her self-titled series. But when I flipped through the other issue on a far ringer I had, I didn't see her there. So I don't know if this is the same thing. I haven't skimmed through it yet. But that's there. 
And then I also have Archer and Armstrong issue 25, very random, but when I read a free comic book day sampler from like two years ago of uh, Valiant Comics, I read the short story that they had for them, or like the preview for them, and I really enjoyed it, so I was like, this is my chance to kind of get into them. And, uh, yeah, it's like, um, a really late issue in the series, but hopefully it'll be easy to follow. Next here I have three Top Cow issues. Um, they're all Witchblade. So I have issue 19 of Witchblade, which, um, I believe all three of these, yeah, all three of these are Michael Turner covers, and I never owned one before, and that made me really sad. And so now I have three that I got for free, which I'm so surprised because a bunch of comic stores started, um, overpricing Michael Turner comics when he passed away. So, uh, here, this is gorgeous. I love this. Um, then this one is my favorite cover that I got, um, from them, which is issue 20. I have 19, 20, and 21. So this is 20, and it's Sarah and Ian, and this is just gorgeous. Like, I freaked out, and of course my mom primarily collects the Wishbelly comics, so I made sure that she owned all of them first before I picked up any. I think there was a few that she didn't, so she got those, but, um, and this is issue 21, which they're all just ridiculously beautiful. Um, okay, now I've gone on to Image. Um, here I've got Bitch Planet, um, issue 2. Um, I have heard a lot about this on book two because it's like a very feminist comic about, um, I believe when women are considered insubordinate, they're sent to this planet called Bitch Planet, and it's kind of like a prison planet thing. It sounds very good. And, um, I've been planning on getting it, but this is issue two. Again, I might try to read the first one online or something, or obtain the first one, but still not bad. It's still just, just the second one. Then here I have Brit, issue 7. Um, it's also from Image. Normally I wouldn't have picked this up because I really don't know who he is, but I love um, Invincible and it is guest starring him, so I picked it up. And speaking of Invincible, uh, my younger cousin, who's only like 7 years old, she also went to Second and Charles and went through the free comics that they had there, and she picked up an Invincible comic, which is issue 116. And she didn't realize how much violence there is in that, and I'm like, yep, it's, it's, it's very violent. Um, and she was going to just get rid of them, and I was like, wait, I don't own this one, and I collect, I have very few, so. But still, it's like a random issue, but um, I needed this if it was just going to be for free, and so I've added it to my collection of Invincible comics. Um, so we have those. And then now I have three DC comics, which are all Superman comics, which is strange because I don't really collect um, Superman, but, you know, whatever. Um, I have here a uh, Superman American Alien issue five. My sister, who is like the biggest Superman fan, she said that she um, she's read this series and it's one of her favorite Superman um, series. Um, so I figured maybe I could read the first few, um, the ones that she owns and then read this one, or maybe I just read this one because I believe she said that the thing that she liked about them was it's like a different story and different art and ev different everything each time, but either way, I have this one out, and I picked it up because it was highly recommended by her. Um, then I have kind of an older one, it's from 1995, and it's Superman The Man of Tomorrow issue 3. I got this solely because Lex is on the cover and it primarily focuses on Lex and anything that has him on the cover or focuses on him, I get because Lex Luthor is one of my favorite um, comic book male characters. <laughs> um, so yeah, I got that one, and in that kind of same vein, I picked up Superman Action Comics issue 7. 163, and it's because there you see Lex in his, like, armor battle suit, and I figured, yeah, that probably focuses on him, and I skimmed through it, and he was in there, so, yeah. Those were 
all of the ones I obtained for free that day. And now I have five here that I bought myself that day, just because I had them on hold there, and I was like, why not? Um, here I have... Oh yeah, um, this is the only, surprisingly, out of all the comics I got that day, the only Marvel title, which is weird, because usually the majority of my haul is only Marvel, but this is Infinity Thunderbolts issue 14. I literally only got it, because look, it's like a team of like Deadpool, Elektra, The Punisher, Red Hulk, and some sort of variation of Spider-Man, I don't know, I don't think that's Peter. but I was like, I'm here for something with all of them, and I don't know, I'll see if I like it, and if I do, I'll get more. Then I have a couple DC, and a couple Image, but the DC ones, I have issue one of Batwoman, um, I really want to get into Batwoman, I have a poster for her on my wall now, and I feel kind of like a poser, because the only thing I've read with her in it is, um, the bombshells, so I wanted to get into this. I also hear, I don't know if it's in this version of her or in the Greg Rucka one, but um, the she is queer. I believe she's a lesbian, so I'm here for this. And then I have uh, All Star Section 8, which is also from um, DC, and it's issue one. And I wanted this one. It kind of reminds me of kind of a ripoff of um, the Pro from Image, which is about a prostitute who like lives in like a very like, low-class area, and she obtains superpowers and, like, becomes a superhero. So this kind of seems very similar, and, um, but the cute thing is it actually has, like, members of, like, the Justice League and stuff trying to teach these people how to be, um, superheroes. And then the last two I have are Image, um, it's issues two and three of Discipline. Um, I picked these up literally because my sister got the first one and it scared her with how violent and sexually graphic it is. So she said, here, you know, do you want this? And I read it and I actually really liked the story and the art, so I picked up issues two and three to keep going with the story. So that's about it. That's all I got. And, um, I'll probably get more next month. I don't know. But, uh, well, this current month that I'm in. That's all of them. Um, so I got, like, what, over 20 comics, and I literally only spent, like, 10 bucks if you include the manga. So, it really wasn't that bad. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Um, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe if you want to see more of my reading material, like comics, manga, books, and my face. Bye.